On today's Kids Corner, Liz's dream of being on the soccer club are dashed, and he's looking for someone to blame. I've wanted to be in the soccer club since forever. I'll bet Skink convinced them that I wasn't popular or cool enough to be in their club. Liz. I'm going to get back at him. Are you serious? No. I know revenge is wrong. Well, huh, that's a relief. But it sure would be nice. Stay tuned. Hi, and welcome to Kids Corner. You know, in Matthew 5, verse 44, Jesus tells us to love your enemies. Pray for those who hurt you. Oh, what a rip. And that's something our good friend Liz, what a major rip, needs to learn today. What a major total rip. Today is club day at Terrarium Elementary School, and Miss Waddle has just posted the list of new club members on the bulletin board. Liz is reading the list, and he's not very happy about it. Hi, Liz. Oh, I can't believe this. You can't believe what? They didn't pick me to be a member. Who? The soccer club. But, Liz, you don't play soccer. Well, I know that. That's not the point. Oh. The coolest, most popular kids in school are in the soccer club. Oh. I'm sorry, Liz. I guess they didn't have enough openings. Uh, no, they only had one opening. Mm. The problem is, guess who they picked? Well, who? well, if it isn't Liz and Lucille. Checking out the newest soccer star, huh? No, Skink? Skink. Yup, see? There's my name right there. S-K-I-N-K. Yeah, yeah, we see it, Skink. <laughs> of all the lizards in the whole school, the soccer club picked me. Of course, it was really only a matter of time before someone noticed my amazing athletic abilities. <laughs> well, yeah, congratulations, I guess. Thanks, Owen. Sorry you didn't make it, Liz, but congratulations on getting your second choice. <laughs> Wait, second choice? What are you talking about, Skink? I didn't put down a second choice. Oh, well, I guess Miss Waddle assigned you one anyway. See? <sighs> The school newspaper? Yeah. <laughs> oh, I think you'll make a great reporter, Liz. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no. This isn't possible. Miss Waddle put me on the student newspaper? Yeah, so what's wrong with that? Only geeks and geckos are on the paper. Hey, I'm on the newspaper. Oh, see? Oh, what? I'm sorry, Lucille. It's just that I've wanted to be in the soccer club since forever. Forever? Well, since the beginning of the school year, anyway, and this mm. was my last opportunity. You don't know that. Oh, please. What? You don't go from the student newspaper to the soccer club. Liz. I'll bet Skink convinced them that I wasn't popular or cool enough to be in their club. Liz. I'm going to get back at them. Liz, are you serious? No. I know revenge is wrong. Well, huh, that's a relief. But it sure would be nice. Two weeks later, Liz got more bad news when Miss Waddle asked him to come to her office. Um, you wanted to see me, Miss Waddle? Yes, Liz. First, I want to tell you that I'm very pleased with the job you're doing on the safety patrol. Oh, yeah, th thanks. I know it wasn't your first choice. <laughs> no, it sure wasn't. And that brings me to the main reason I wanted to see you today. Uh-huh. The soccer club. What? They're in trouble. They are? Yes. They've spent so much time playing soccer and goofing off that their schoolwork is going undone and their grades are suffering. Oh, wow. Now, if they don't change their ways and start doing better, I'm going to have to disband the club altogether. Really? I, oh, I mean, um, oh, that's too bad. I'm glad to hear you say that. You are? Why? Because I want you to deliver my message to them. Oh, what, me? Wait, why me? I, I want to give them every chance to change their ways before I lower the boom on but, them. But, Miss Waddle, And I... I think they're more likely to listen to someone their own age. Oh, I don't know. Miss Waddle, Now, I... Liz, I really believe you're the best person to speak with them. Oh, but... Please. <sighs> yes, Miss Waddle. Liz was stunned. When he left Miss Waddle's office, he went straight to Lucille to tell her what had happened. 
Lucille, Miss Waddle doesn't realize what she's asking me to do. I'm gonna look like even more of a geek. Would you not go off with the geek stuff? I'm sorry, but Mm -hmm. this is not gonna turn out the way she thinks it will. What makes you say that? Oh, it just won't, that's all. I know it won't. I can't do this. Yeah, but Miss Waddle is expecting you to. Ah, And you told her that you would. I can't do it, Lucille. I I won't. I'll, I'll run away first. Liz. I'll run away first. Liz. That is one strange lizard. Liz took off down the sidewalk as fast as he could. He ran until he was out of breath, then walked for a while, then ran some more, all the time mumbling to himself. I can't do it. I can't. I won't do it. When he came to Grandpa Anoli's farm, he just kept running, across the fields and toward the woods. But that was a mistake, because he was moving so fast he didn't see the old boards covering the abandoned well until it was too late. Whoa, 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 whoa! Oh! Liz wasn't badly hurt, but he was scratched up and very sore. He tried to climb out. <laughs> Boy. Help! Help! Somebody! Anybody! There's nobody. Oh, man. What am I going to do? Wait a minute. I know what I need to do. Oh, dear God. Please help me. I'm really scared right now. I don't know how I'm going to get out of here. God, are you there? Hello? Um, hello? Liz, is that you? You you know my name? What, am I kidding? Of course you know my name. (laughs) Are you all right? Well, yeah. I mean, I'm a little stunned. You've never actually talked to me before, so I'm... What are you talking about? I I talk to you nearly every day of your life. What? Hey, 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 wait a minute. Uh, Grandpa Noli? Is that you? Of course it is. You're on my land. What do you think it was? Well, I... Oh, never mind. Can you get me out of here? Can't you climb out? No, I tried, but the sides are too slippery. Oh. I'm going to need my block and tackle. I'll be right back. As Grandpa went through the process of setting up the block and tackle, he asked Liz how he ended up down in the well in the first place. Liz briefly explained what had happened. When he finished, Grandpa chuckled. (laughs) Yeah, go ahead and laugh. I know it sounds pretty silly. Actually, I was thinking it sounded pretty familiar. Familiar? Yeah. Why, did you do something like this when you were young? No, but Jonah did. Jonah Gollywasp fell into a well? No, not Jonah Gollywasp. Jonah, son of Amatai. Oh. And it wasn't a well. It was a big fish, like a whale. Oh. Uh, Grandpa, what are you talking about? Oh, don't tell me you never heard the story of Jonah and the big fish. Oh, of course I have. I just... Well, I just don't remember all the details right now, that's all. There we go. All right, we're all ready. Okay. Here comes the rope. Uh, yeah. All right, I got it. Okay, now, tie the rope around under your arm. Okay. Yeah, like that. Uh, there you go. All right. Uh, mm-hmm. uh, okay, I'm ready. Okay, ready? Here we go. Go. Oh, oh. oh man. Oh. Ah, there we go. Oh. Uh, all right, now let me help you untie that oh, rope. Thanks. Pull it around. Like oh, yeah. man. Oh, thanks, Grandpa Noli. <laughs> Boy, am I glad to be out of there. Yeah, I'm sure you are, but. Uh, what? Yeah, I've <laughs> seen some muddy lizards in my time, but you take the cake. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I, I tell um, you what, let's walk over to my place and uh, get you cleaned up, huh? <laughs> That's probably a good idea. <laughs> hey, while we're walking, you yeah. can tell me what you were saying about Jonah. Ah, right. Okay. Well, uh, see, God told Jonah to go to the great city of Nineveh, mm-hmm. cry against it. Cry? Well, not. Boo hoo cry, or cry out, like yell a message. Oh, to him. oh, okay, I got it. Mm-hmm. So, what was the message? Well, God saw how wicked Nineveh was, and He wanted Jonah to tell him to change their ways or else. Oh. But 
Jonah decided he didn't want to deliver that message. So, you know what he did? He ran away? You got it. No. Only he didn't run across a field. He he went to the town of Joppa and hopped aboard a ship going to Tarshish. Oh. If he could hide from God. Well, what happened? Well, God wasn't very pleased, that's for sure. No. He sent a great storm that knocked the ship around like a ping-pong ball in a hurricane. Wow. Scared the captain and the crew half to death. Captain! We can't outrun the storm! The ship is breaking up! We have to lighten her! Throw the cargo overboard! And pray to your gods to save your lives! So they threw all the ship's cargo into the sea, but it didn't help much. Neither did praying to their gods. Well, where was Jonah? (laughs) Believe it or not, he was on the lower deck, fast asleep. No way, asleep? Guess running from God can really tire you out. I guess so. The captain couldn't believe it either. He woke Jonah up. What are you doing sleeping? Call upon your God. Have mercy on us so we won't die. Captain! Captain! What is it? It is him. What? The rest of the crew and I cast lots to see who brought this evil upon us. And the lot fell upon this man. Who are you? I am Jonah, a Hebrew. I worship the Lord, the God of heaven, who made the sea and the land. The God of the Hebrews! What have you done? He told me to do something I don't want to do. So I am running for him. Are you mad? You cannot run from God. The storm is getting worse. What must we do to make the sea quiet down? Throw me overboard, then the storm will stop. Sounds good to me. No. Man the oars. We'll row our way out of this. Captain? That's an order. Go. Now. The men rowed hard, trying to get back to land, but it was no use. The storm just got worse and worse. Finally, Jonah went back to the captain. It is because of me that this great storm has come upon you. You have to throw me overboard. Listen to him, Captain. The ship won't last much longer. Uh, Lord, please don't let us die for taking this man's life. After all, we might not be guilty of doing anything wrong. So don't hold us accountable for killing him. Lord, you always do what you want to. All right, throw him over. So they took Jonah and threw him into the sea. Almost immediately, the storm stopped. The crew was terrified and offered a sacrifice to the Lord and made all sorts of vows. And then something even more incredible happened. Look, a great fish! It is headed straight for Jonah. Look out! Jonah! Look out! It swallowed him alive. Oh, wait a minute. The fish swallowed him? Yep. Beard, sandals, and all. Whoa. (laughs) Did he... did he die? Well, that's the amazing thing. He didn't. No way. In fact, he stayed alive in the belly of the fish for three days and nights. He must have been terrified. I'd say that's a pretty fair assumption. Okay, what did he do all that time? What you were doing when I walked up. He prayed? Yep. Cried out for help, confessed his sin, and thanked God mightily. Oh, whoa. What happened? God caused the big fish to vomit Jonah out on dry land. Ew! (laughs) Oh, but cool! Yeah. (laughs) You know, you're really right, Grandpa. It does sound a lot like my situation. Mm -hmm. Well, except for the part with the fish. Well, there is another difference. Yeah? Uh, That prayer Jonah prayed? Uh Uh-huh. One of the last lines says, I will do what I have promised. Meaning? When Jonah got out of that fish, he obeyed God and went to Nineveh. (sighs) I get it. I need to go talk to the soccer club. (laughs) You're right, Grandpa. I'll go right now. See you later. Wait, 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 Liz. Uh, Hold on a minute. There's more to the story. Liz! (laughs) 
Liz went straight to the soccer club's hangout without even taking the time to clean himself up and delivered Miss Waddle's message. And if you don't change your ways and start doing better, she's going to disband the club altogether. And she's not kidding. So there. And before Skink or any of the others could say a word, Liz turned around and marched out again. Ha, laugh that off, smart guys. Liz went home feeling pretty good. In fact, he felt pretty good for the rest of the week until the day he met up with Lucille on the way to school. Liz, you'll never guess what I just heard. What? Spike Fleabag said that Annie Scalefeather told him that Maury Klumptoes overheard Miss Swaddle telling Mr. Agama that she's going to make an announcement about the soccer club today. Oh. Didn't you hear me? Yeah. Well, you'll get what you wanted. She's going to disband the club. Uh, no, she's going to make an announcement about them. That isn't the same thing. Oh. Sure enough, when they got to school, Miss Waddle made an announcement over the intercom. As some of you may have heard, I was thinking very seriously about disbanding the soccer club due to poor academic performance. Liz, I don't know. Oh, just wait. Well, I'm pleased to report that the club members have dramatically improved their homework assignments and test scores this past week. They've done a complete turnaround, and so I see no reason to disband them, at least for the time being. In fact, I'm very proud of them, and I hope you'll all take the time to congratulate them on their hard work and improved performance. Have a good day. How about that, Lizarardo? We're off the hook. I can't believe it. Oh, I can. I can believe it all too well. Liz might not have been surprised, but he was angry, and he stayed angry the rest of the day. In fact, he was still mad as he walked home from school. I knew it. I just knew it. I knew she would do this. Liz, oh. who are you talking to, and what are you talking about? Hi, Grandpa. Doesn't sound too good, and what's the problem? Liz told Grandpa what Miss Waddle did for the soccer club. Well, good for them. So, why are you so mad? <laughs> Because I knew this would happen, that's why. I knew those sneaks would manage to get on Miss Waddle's good side and she would forgive them and everything would be okay. That's why I didn't want to deliver her message in the first place. I knew she wasn't going to follow through. So you're mad at her for forgiving them? Well, yeah! <laughs> like I said before, it sounds familiar. Oh, no. Don't tell me this happened to Jonah, too. Yep, sure did. How? Well, God told Jonah a second time to go to Nineveh and cry against it. And this time, Jonah obeyed. In 40 days, Nineveh will be destroyed. In 40 days, Nineveh will be destroyed. Now, Nineveh was huge. It took three days to get across it. Wow. And Jonah wasn't more than one day across when the people of the city started believing him and God. Really? Yep. An outright miracle. From the richest to the poorest, they proclaimed a fast and put on sackcloth. Wait, what's sackcloth? Oh, uh, real uncomfortable clothes people wore to show God how sorry they were. Oh, okay. In fact, when the king of Nineveh heard about this, even he covered himself with sackcloth and sat in ashes. Wow. And then he made a proclamation throughout the whole city. None of you nor your animals may eat or drink a thing. Each of you must wear sackcloth. And you must even put sackcloth on your animals. You must also pray to the Lord God with all your heart and stop being sinful and cruel. Maybe God will change his mind and have mercy on us so we won't be destroyed. Sure enough, when God saw how they turned from their evil ways, he didn't destroy Nineveh. Well, yeah, just like Miss Waddle spared the soccer club. Mm -hmm. So, how did Jonah feel about it? About the same way you felt about what Miss Waddle did. Didn't I say before I left home that you would do this, Lord? That is why I ran away to Tarshish. I knew that you were a gracious and compassionate God, slow to get angry and filled with unfailing love. I knew you easily could cancel your plans for destroying these people. Oh, just kill me now, Lord. I'd rather be dead than alive, because nothing I predicted is going to happen. Yep, you're right. That does sound familiar. Mm -hmm. Well, except for the part about wanting to die. So, did God uh, 
you know, over... No, not quite. Jonah stomped out of the city, plopped himself down in the desert, and made a little tent for himself. A tent? Mm-hmm. Well, what happened? No, God caused a plant to grow over Jonah to give him shade, which made him very happy. Oh, well, that was nice. It sure was. But the next day, God caused a worm to attack the plant so that it withered and died. Oh. Well, when the sun rose, God made a hot wind blow and caused the sun to beat on Jonah's head so hard he nearly fainted. Please, God, let me die. It's better for me to die. But then God talked to Jonah. Wait a minute, God talked to him? What did God say? You are angry about the plant? Yes, Lord. Angry enough to die. You have been concerned about this vine, but you did not take care of it. You did not make it grow. It grew up in one night and died the next. Nineveh has more than 120,000 people. They can't tell right from wrong. Nineveh also has a lot of cattle. So shouldn't I show concern for that great city? And that's where the story of Jonah ends. Wow. Mm -hmm. Now, did you get the point? Of course. Well, uh, sort of. (laughs) (laughs) See, God doesn't like it when we don't care about what happens to our enemies. And if God loves those who sin against him, then we should be able to care about them too, right? Right. Oh, Grandpa, why didn't you tell me this before? I wanted to, what? but you ran off before I could. Oh. Anyway, I hope you see now how important it is to let love rule your heart instead of hate. Now, do you? Yeah. Yeah, I do. <laughs> Good. Now, it may be the hardest thing you ever have to do, but you can't go wrong when you decide to obey God by loving your enemies. <laughs> don't wanna go, don't want to serve. These irritating people have a lot of nerve. But don't you know, but can't you see? Every one of them means oh so much to me. To all the things they've done to me But you would have a different view If you could see things like I do You see some people who have ruined your day I see some people who have lost their way